Welcome to the Kimball from Home. Thank you for joining me as I talk about a favorite work in the collection of the Kimball Art Museum. I'm Nancy Edwards, I'm Curator of European Art and Head of Academic Services, and I'd like to talk to you about this beautiful still life with mackerel by the French painter Anne Vallier Coster. It's the Kimball's latest acquisition. It was painted in 1787 by the greatest still life painter in France at that time. In these weeks while we've been staying at home, perhaps you've been cooking a little more than usual. I know I have, and perhaps enjoying some seasonal springtime foods. So I thought this still life seemed topical, uh, even if your prep table doesn't look quite like this one. Well, I love its composition with its sil silvery and cool tones. It's very peaceful, it's harmonious. At the same time, it's dynamic with this repetition of elliptical shapes that keeps the eye roving in, within the composition. I also love the way the artist captures uh, the textures and the reflected light on different materials, the re reflections on the crystal glasses, uh, the silver metal, and that wonderful skin of the fish. It it's all really magical. Well, uh, French still lives with fish are unusual, and those with mackerel are virtually non-existent. Um, a recent write-up about the work questioned where Valier Coster would have seen fresh mackerel, assuming that these saltwater fish were unavailable in Paris where she lived. This piqued my curiosity because I, I'm really not so familiar with uh, fresh mackerel. And fresh, uh, they are indeed. Uh, just look at this brilliant application of color, uh, the vermilion and ochre strokes near the, the gills that truly indicates freshness, and also the glistening uh, white and gray strokes of the underbelly just below the striped back. Well, my research confirmed that fresh mackerel were indeed available in Paris when Vallier Coster painted this canvas. They were fished off the coast of Normandy in May and transported by a boat or by horse to Paris. Most mackerel, like herring, would have actually been salted and preserved, but the very best mackerel were fresh. These prints show Parisian women hawking fresh mackerel. Uh, the, the one on the left predates the Kimball painting, and the print at the right from about 1825 has at the top, Prix de Paris, in other words, those street cries, um, and, and below is the text of one of those street uh, cries that reads, Il arrive, il arrive le macro, uh, qu'il est donc beau le macro, uh, it's here, it's here, mackerel, such beautiful mackerel. So uh, the arrival of delectable mackerel was much anticipated and celebrated in May by people of all stations. And according to the contemporary Almanac des Gourmands, uh, people would gather around them, put them up for auction, and feature them in invitations. So the Kimball still life shows off the preparations for this springtime feast in May. A simple recipe was recommended. It could be split open and stuffed with butter and herbs uh, and grilled or dressed with olive oil and lemon. You can almost taste that thick green olive oil in this elegant silver cruet set. Its ornament is in the very latest neoclassical fashion. Valier Coster's father was a goldsmith, and if she didn't own this cruet set herself, she would have had no trouble borrowing one. Uh, if we look at its base, we see a reflection of a window, probably her studio one, uh, window, and it's really quite wonderful. The central silver receptacle was also a luxury item that began to appear in the mid-18th century. 
it was used to cool the wine glasses before use, uh, hence its name Rafraîchissoir or Verrière. And those lobed edges hold the stem so that the feet protrude. It would have been placed on a side table since proper etiquette dictated that glasses were served to each guest instead of being set on the dining table. You can still find uh, such silver vessels on the art market, like the one shown on the right. And because the dish is curved, the reflection of the cut lemon appears to be duplicated. Now, it's um, yellow like pigment has faded over the years. And originally, it would have been much more vivid yellow. Seen at the right, the cake-like brioche made with butter and egg suits the celebration. Its shiny crust and warm hues balance the warm uh, tones of the mackerel grills at the left. The brioche also pays homage to Valier Coster's great predecessor, Chardin, who famously painted this still life I'm showing in the right, featuring a brioche. It's today in the Louvre. The festive sprigs with orange blossoms signal springtime. The plump fish are piled on a white damask cloth. Its press folds testifying to a very well run household. Uh, on the corner of the cloth, if we look at the very bottom right of the picture, Valier Coster has placed her initials. B, C, and the number six below. Such monograms would have been embroidered on her very own linens to keep inventory of multiple sets as she laundered and rotated her linens. Now, it's almost impossible to see in this image, but right at the bottom uh, of the, this um, picture, there's another signature on the table and it reads Madame V. Coster, 1787. To sum up, this magically naturalistic still life whets our appetite for a simple but sumptuous feast such as would have been enjoyed in a well-to-do household like Valier Coster's own or that of her patrons. It was painted just before the French Revolution, which she survived, despite her bourgeois and aristocratic clientele. And in closing, a few words about the remarkable Anne Vallier Coster, whose likeness is recorded in this portrait by a fellow artist. She overcame considerable obstacles to achieve her success as the foremost still life painter in France at the end of the century. On the strength of her own talents, by age 26, she was one of the very few women to be accepted as a member of the powerful French Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture. Moreover, she was given an apartment in the Louvre. This allowed her to show her work at the annual Salon and thereby gain, gain uh, critical acclaim and patronage. Today, our still life joins this self-portrait that I'm showing in the right, a highlight of the Kimball collection by the great portraitist Elisabeth Vichet Lebrun, Valet et Coster's slightly younger contemporary and also a member of the French Academy. Well, thank you for joining me. We're very eager to welcome you back soon to the Kimball to view these extraordinary paintings. We're so lucky to have them in our collection. In the meantime, please visit the Kimball online and enjoy springtime with a cool drink and your favorite seasonal food. Thanks. Bye-bye.